let's get down to a very bold statement here, which is how to cure fear and anxiety. And I literally just made this for you just a minute ago. I sat down and, and wrote this out because this has plagued me for a long, long time in my life. And I wanted to share with you something that I discovered that really, really helped. And it's something that's immediately impactful and you can get results, change your mindset. It's just, it's awesome. So let's go here. But first, here's a big fat disclaimer, okay? I am about as far from a self-help guru as humanly possible. I shun the woo-woo crowd and I don't buy into the if you can believe it, you can achieve it philosophy. And I think most help self-help stuff is hogwash and it's a waste of time and energy and money. And I do not believe that if you can that you can just like achieve anything you want in life as long as you quote set your mind to it okay so because for example no matter how much i set my mind to playing basketball for the nba lakers it's not going to happen okay because i'm 5 foot 11 and weigh 175 pounds i'm not ever going to be 6 foot 8 and weigh 230 with 10% body fat and be able to actually run up and down the court and play against people like LeBron James it's not going to happen even if i set my mind to it and and i and i got the best nutrition and the best uh coach to be a basketball um player it's just not going to happen okay so that's my disclaimer to you is that what i'm about to give you is real measurable and tangible it's not woo woo heady self help stuff okay all right now that that's out of the way let's get to the meat of it Here's a few things that I do stand for. Hard work, figuring out what you're really good at and then sticking to it, and avoiding shiny objects and fads and quick fixes. I'm all for long-term, big-picture thinking, and I'm all for strategic marketing that gets measurable, tangible results. Okay. So let's face this fact. Everybody has fear and anxiety. The single mom, right? She's worried about parenting decisions and financial decisions. The CEO of a big firm. He's worried about increasing revenue and his own job security. Okay. The entrepreneur making a hundred, a million bucks a year. Okay. He's always thinking, can I keep my income steady? And by the way, all the entrepreneurs that I know personally and have met through the years, it doesn't matter if they're making a 50,000 a year or 50 million a year. They still have this question. Okay. And the ultra rich, I, I happen to have the privilege of knowing a few ultra rich people. Um, and these are people ultra rich in my book are people that are are doing anywhere from you know 500 probably a million dollars a month in personal income um or or their wealth is is a big lump sum uh their question always is can i keep the wealth that i have now okay so i think all of this comes down to how do you define success okay and what does it really mean to have a successful business or a successful marriage or a successful ad campaign right so i'm gonna hang on i'm gonna close my window it's overlooking my pool and I see my kids about to go out and take a swim. So the successful ad campaign, for example, for some people, a successful ad campaign means that you're acquiring customers at cost. That's what it means to me. If, if I'm acquiring customers at cost or better, then I'm happy because now I'm building a list for free and then I can sell those customers things down the road. But for some people, if they're not ROI positive the very first day, they're freaking out. So again, it's how we define it, how we approach it, what our mindset is. And what does it mean to have this quote, successful life? You know, what does that even mean? We use these terms all the time, to, but we don't stop to think what they actually mean. So I think a big problem that many of us face is this elusive one-time event, okay? And I'm telling you, I pursued this for years before I ever stopped to think about what the heck I was doing. I used to say all the time things like this, if I can just blank, fill in the blank, okay? Then I'll be happy, successful, etc. Here's some examples. If I can just buy a bigger house, if I can just drive a nicer car, if I can just make more money, if I can just have more free time to do the stuff that I want to do, if I can be less stressed, if I can lose 15 pounds, if I can have a better relationship with my spouse or whatever, whatever kind of relationship it happens to be with my kids, um, those things are event driven. Okay. You buy a house. It's a one time event and it's done. You buy a new car. You're all excited about it. By the time you're driving off the lot, you're like, Oh man, I don't really necessarily like the, the way this thing drives or wow, the engine's louder than I thought or wow, the air conditioner doesn't work as well as I thought it would. Or I remember there was a time in my life when I thought if I could just replace my income, start my own business and replace my income and have time to do stuff with my kids and, and just have more free time, then I would be happy. But you know what happened is I did replace that income and then I like doubled that income and then I quadrupled that income and I just, it, it was always fleeting. It was like, well, if I can just make this much or that much and I just kept going, okay? So this led me down a path of thinking that this is the wrong way to think about this stuff. All right. Pursuing success as a one-time event always results in a surge of temporary joy. And sometimes it's really, really good, right? Followed by the crash of disappointment. So I've done product launches before and you see the orders coming in so fast as you're about to crash 
the, the, the server or your shopping cart. And then two or three days later, the cart closes and then you can't help but have a, a feeling of disappointment. Or I've had ad campaigns that were a big success and we're acquiring customers left and right. And then our ads get like shut off or, you know, those customers, we, we've got all those customers at cost and then they didn't buy anything. That's also happened. Okay. But the point is thinking of it as a one-time event always results in a surge of joy followed by a crash of disappointment. And this results in a never ending cycle of goal setting and accomplishment and disappointment. It's a three fold problem. It's you set the goal, you accomplish the goal. And then once you catch up to that thing, you're disappointed. So to drive a stake into the heart of fear and anxiety caused by this vicious cycle, you just need to do one little old thing, change how you define success. So you need to make this mind shift from success is not an event like winning the lottery. Okay. Success is a state of being, which I know sounds woo-woo, right? But just stick with me here. A simple way to change how you think about success is this. Stop using the future tense, which is an event-driven, and start using the present tense, which is process-driven. Okay, here's some examples. Here's how to do this and plus the five words that can change your life. These five words, I am being successful when... If you can master those five words into your vocabulary, your whole life is going to change. The way you view your day is going to change. The way you view your life, your year, your relationships, your business is going to change. And I'm going to show you how. Stop saying, I will be successful when, and start saying, I am being successful when. Here's some examples. The success mindset of, I'm being successful when. Now, all of these I'm about to show you are me. Okay. This is my personal definition. Yours may be completely different. Okay, get that. I, I have my specific goals and my personality, my mindset and the things that, that, that I define as being successful. You may have a completely different definition. Okay. So don't get hung up on the specifics. I'm just giving you some examples here. All right. I'm being successful when my mortgage is paid on time every month. Pretty simple, right? But there was a time in my life where that was a huge deal. Okay. There was a time in my life I was $70,000 in credit card debt. I had four kids. I was paying my mortgage on cash advances. And my wife found out she was pregnant with our fifth child. And we had to go on welfare. Okay. So yes, I've been on the other side of the fence and having my mortgage paid on time every month. Hey, that's being successful for me. That's one small thing. Okay. I'm also being successful when I take my wife on a date every Friday without exception. Okay. Even when we were flat broke. Our date might have been, let's take a walk around the block. Let's hire the kid from across the street to come over and watch our kids so you and I can take a walk around the block and just, you know, decompress a little bit. Okay. Now, how about I'm being successful when I'm steadily acquiring new customers at break even or better? Okay. That means that my funnel is being filled up in any of my businesses. If I'm acquiring customers at break even or better, I know that those people are going to go into my follow up system and eventually be ROI positive. I'm being successful when I'm being a good student of marketing and business. Okay. I'm not being successful when I'm think that, you know, when I get off on, I get busy and I, and I stop studying, I stop learning, I stop being inquisitive. Okay. I'm being successful when I am being a good student of those things. I'm being successful when I spend at least two hours a day playing with my kids. Okay. For me, this is a big deal. I want to spend time with my family. And if I get too busy working or I get distracted on a new project or whatever, I'm not being successful. I'm being successful when I plan and take at least four weeks of vacation a year. Hopefully I take more than that. But that's part of my, my definition of success is taking the appropriate time off. I'm being successful when I take time to help fellow entrepreneurs solve a BAP. A BAP is a big ass problem. And I got that from Frank Kern. I think it's a great way to describe it. But when I take time to sit, to talk, to help you know, one of my buddies or one of my mastermind guys or somebody in, in, in war room or something that I might be in some group I might be in. Um, when I help them solve a BAP, that gives me a lot of personal satisfaction. Here's some more examples. I'm being successful when all personal credit cards are paid in full every month. Okay. There was a time in my life, like I mentioned earlier, that my credit cards were not paid in full every month. Okay. So that's a big deal for me. I'm being successful when my income taxes are paid on time without penalties and interest. I have paid more penalties and interest I, it would, it would, I'm ashamed to say how much penalties and interest I've paid over the years on income taxes because I'm just a, not good with that. Okay. I'm just being honest with you. I'm not good with it. I'm trying to get better, but I'm being successful when they're paid on time and I'm paying it in. I'm not having to pay penalties and interest and I give the government a dime more than they already swindle from me. All right. 
I'm being successful when I maintain a healthy weight and exercise regularly. So if I stop eating right and I stop start eating crap and I stop exercising, I'm not being successful. So it's not like once I lose 15 pounds, then I'll be a success. No, it's when I am maintaining a healthy weight and I'm exercising. That's my definition. I'm being successful when I take time to attend my spiritual needs every day. Okay, so for me, being a Catholic, I go to Mass. I pray the Rosary. I read Scripture. Okay, that's what I do. And if, and I, if I get away from that, I start to disintegrate. I'm being successful when I avoid, like the plague, anything that sucks away my time and energy and robs me of following through with what really matters. So for me, this is getting sucked into Facebook, email, phones, text, okay, voicemails, all that stuff. If I batch all of that and check my email, let's say one time for 30 minutes a day, or I batch all of my phone calls and I return all my phone calls one time during the day, or I look at text one time during the day, I actually put my phone either off or in airplane mode the majority of the day, just to avoid this temptation. Okay, I'm being successful when I surround myself with other entrepreneurs who are at the top of their game so I can be energized and excited about business. I am being successful when I attend at least four major expositions, live events like SHOT Show, uh, the licensing expedition. I go to a digital marketers event almost every year. Um, so things like that, because I like being around other entrepreneurs, other business owners, other people that are successful. In terms of their, see, there I go again, successful, right? We're just so like ingrained in us, like, well, how do I know this guy's being successful? Okay, so I'm being successful when I study the old school masters of sales and marketing, like David Ogilvy and Claude Hopkins. And what this keep, keeps me, the reason this bullet points on here is because it keeps me from falling into the shiny object syndrome, right? Like, oh, this is new, it's new, it's new. Mm, not really, not really, dude. Like Claude Hopkins is writing copy and testing things a uh, hundred years ago. And he probably, like if, you know, I don't want to go into my, my love of Claude, Claude Hopkins, but um, this keeps me grounded is studying these old school masters. I'm being successful when I say no to opportunities that do not match my current business and lifestyle goals. This is huge because I have, look, as an entrepreneur, there are way more opportunities than there is time, okay? And one of the things that, that throws me off is saying yes to too many things. Too many joint ventures, too many opportunities to, to spin up a business over here or to start a clothing line or to have an e-commerce store or to buy traffic or to name it. You name it, dude. There's more opportunity. As an entrepreneur, your eyes are always open to this stuff and you're like, oh, dude, there's money flowing here. I can jump in and do that. And I can make some quick cash. That always bites me in the butt. It always bites me in the butt. So I've learned over the years that I'm being successful when I'm saying no. I'm saying no to things. Also, I'm being successful when I remember how short life is and slow down to enjoy it. Okay, whether it's I'm driving past the beach on Del Mar to pull over for 10 minutes and walk out there and stare at the ocean for 10 minutes. Dang, dude, that's 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 10 minutes. Like your life is long. 10 minutes is short. It's okay. Pull over. Like just the other night, I had a conversation with a guy at Spain at one of the breweries here in San Diego. And we were just, you know, just rapping, just talking. And I walked away and I was like energized. I just enjoy talking to people and love being around people. And, and at first I was like, oh man, this guy, you know, I, I got to hurry up and get home. I got this, that, the other thing to do. And then I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to sit here for a second and listen to this dude and just engage in this conversation and enjoy it. So that's, you know, remembering how short life is and slowing down to enjoy it. That's a biggie. Especially when you get to my age and, and people you know you went and graduated from high school and college with are, um, you know, either not here or in my case, the crowd I used to run with, some of them are dead or in jail. All right, and I'm being successful when I make a quick mental list of 10 things I'm grateful for every morning. And this is, man, that's a great exercise right there. I am grateful for not being stuck in the hospital, writhing in pain. I am grateful for my health. I am grateful for the fact that the sun is shining today. I am grateful that I live in this, in my opinion, one of the best cities in, in, in the world, but definitely one of the best cities in the United States, San Diego. Um, I'm grateful that um, I have a wife who's not running around on me, to, from what I know. <laughs> And so those are things for me. One more. I'm being successful when I help people move from where they are now to where they want to be. And that's one of my big passions. My big passion point is helping people kind of uh, move from where they are to where they want to go. So here's what to do next. Name five ways that you are being successful right now. Okay. Name five ways that you are being successful right now. And if you start with five, what's going to happen is just more and more things are going to come to you. It's just going to be like, wow, man, here's 10 things, 15 things, 20 things. But I want you to start with five. And then I want you to write those down and, and to remind yourself of those things daily, daily, because you will fall back into the mindset of I will be successful when, which is a trap. Go to overwatch.com slash apply to apply for your free consultation now. <laughs>